Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. The Captain Captain Hawk Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. The Captain Captain Hawk Flicks. Flicks. Welcome to the Captain Talk Flicks Podcast. I'm your host, the Captain Cortez, a.k.a. Mr. Love. And this is where we talk flicks. I'm walking the podcast, podcast where me, the Captain, talks about movies, TV, sports, flicks. Anything you see in the screen, I'd like to get in here and give my unique perspective. Because after 46 years of being on planet Earth, I've developed a unique perspective by these movies, TV, sports, and flicks. Let's get a tell about it. Because just maybe... Just maybe you care. In according to the stats, looks like you do care. I want to give a big shout out to Chile. Chile, 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 Chile. We got some plays over this past week. Gracias, gratitude, total robot. In Chile, Chile. I still have not had the Jordi Bond. I've been searching, looking for that wonderful, awesome dish you guys call Jordi Bond. Unfortunately, where I live, nobody got it. If they got it, I ain't heard about it yet, but I've been searching, looking, trying to taste that awesome chole pan. It looks like I'm just going to have to fly down to Chile to have some chole pan. One day, I will have chole pan. I cannot wait. I'm so excited for it. It looks so good. So, thanks for listening. Guys, please appreciate that. And just said for her, back in the day with School Bay Radio DJ, but I never got a job. And I think I never got a job. Because I never had Johnny Bond. <laughs> if I just would have ate the delicious Johnny Bond, that would have motivated me to pursue the dream of becoming a radio DJ. But I didn't. But that allowed me to become the greatest podcaster in the Matrix. Some to debate. Might be true, might not be true. But I said it on the internet. So it's got to be true, right? Because everything on the internet is facts, not facts, truth, not truth. I don't even know. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I didn't make the internet. I have no idea. But it was, uh, just be mindful. Just be aware we are on the internet. Watch out. Anyways, I can ramble here all day, but I won't. Let's get right into the podcast. But first... A word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, you probably know by now, sometimes I rap. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I rapped again. Yes, on March 12, 2022, I dropped a new album called Beautiful Madness. Eight tracks, experimental spoken word, me rapping over Cynthia crazy cosmic beats so if you want to hear the beautiful madness i'll put a link below to my band camp page and you can check out beautiful madness because let's be real my flows my raps are madness and they are beautiful <laughs> so i'll put the link below check it out stream it download to share it and now let's get out the podcast Ladies and gentlemen, here I am again. I'm back again. I will not stop. I'm like the Terminator. I just keep going and going and going and keep coming and going and moving like crazy. It's what I do. It's my ninja way. I was made for this. I never became a radio DJ, but I was made and built for podcasting. It's my life's mission and calling. Maybe, maybe not. Podcast didn't even exist when I was a kid. How could I have known in 2022 that I would be podcasting? It's craziness. It's madness. It's unbelievable that there's 400 and some episodes of me just doing this. And what's even more unbelievable is people actually listening to it. Like, seriously. A lot of people back in the day tell me to shut up. I don't want to hear what you're saying. We don't want to hear what you're saying, Captain. And now people want to hear. They want to know. I don't know why. It's very unclear. I'm a strange guy, which you probably know by now. But anyways, thank you. Gracias. I appreciate you stopping by and listening for about 10, 15 minutes. Because I know time is precious. Time is very valuable. I say this all the time. Time, attention, and focus is extremely valuable. 
very valuable. And if you give me a little bit of that time, attention, and focus, I appreciate it because I know how valuable it is. So when you hear these podcasts, I try to make them worth your while. And we try to learn a little something, grow a little bit, laugh a little bit, have some fun. It's what we do here. So thanks again for giving me some of your attention, focus, and time. Much appreciated. And now I'm not going to tell you no little story about I have exercise this week or yoga or any of that or had chorizo tacos, which I did not, which I want to have. I'm not going to talk about any of that. Let's get right into the podcast. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Let's do this. So let me start now because there's a lot I want to unpack. And one last thing, there will be spoilers. So if you do not want to be spoiled about Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery, stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the plot lines that you're used to. All right, so stop now if you don't want to be spoiled. If not, let's rock and roll. Let's go. Let's do it. Boom. So ladies and gentlemen. Let me start with Star Trek Disco. Star Trek Disco episode Species 10C. Finally, after a journey for so long, we finally come in first contact with the Species 10C. Communicating with a new species. Like I said last podcast, I've been studying other languages, Earth languages, the last uh, three months. So I've been kind of studying languages, seeing the patterns, seeing how it works. I'm doing a few different ones so I get to see how this language thing works on Earth. I get to examine it. And be, I'm going to be honest. It's not that complex. I used to think that language was very complex back when I was younger. But after spending three months with it and examining how it works, examining how the words work, and it's a lot of it's just memorization, pattern recognition, and knowing when to say, when to use what patterns in what moments of time is what it seems like. It really seems that way. It doesn't seem that complex. Now, in Star Trek Disco, they're meeting with a species that does not communicate in this fashion when I'm on Duolingo doing that. I'm on Duolingo doing these languages. This species 10C is using some crazy, evolved, mathematical way of communication. Now, that particular communication is a little bit more complex than what I'm doing over on Duolingo, right? And additionally, in the episode... They show that that the 10 species is so evolved is they're kind of have to dumb it down a little bit. They have to dumb their language down a little bit just so they can communicate with us earthlings. Because as highly evolved as the Star Trek crew is, it's all the fancy technology they got. It's how 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 all that stuff seems like magic to the 10 C. It's like kids play, it's child's play. It's like Stone Age, right? They had to dumb down their language just to communicate with us. Because there are some highly evolved communication systems that we cannot even understand, right? And they make that very known in Star Trek. And it's interesting that I'm studying language at this moment in time. And to see how, like, man, our communication systems seem kind of complex when, after looking, not as much. And to think that there's alien species out in the universe who can communicate in a totally different, evolved fashion that we can't even comprehend. It's very cool that Star Trek examined this. This Star Trek season is all real Star. It's like real exploring, discovering, man. Communication, first contacts. Complex ideas, themes. It's all peppered throughout this whole season. So it's very interesting how they show this language and how complex it is. And it made me think about a lot of like real life things. Like we ever meet aliens. Like how they can be completely totally different than what we know life as i've gave this a lot of thought over the years right and a lot of science fiction not just star trek all science fiction all the a lot of the aliens kind of look like us they have bodies like us they talk like us slightly variances but very similar to human beings but out there in space out in the cosmos there can be tons of life it just evolved in a very different unique way That is totally foreign to what we know as being life. In the way they communicate, the way they live, how 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 their body is, if they have a body. The whole experience of life form could be totally different. And we've not seen what the 10C species even look like. And we may not see them. Maybe you can't even view them with human eyes. The human eyes are not evolved enough to even perceive the 10C species. That's a possibility. But just to think, like, just how an alien would be, like, just, 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 just expand that mind. Like, we may not, we just can't even comprehend, 
right? It just, it's that so foreign to us. It's so crazy to even think that. It's very cool to think that as well. So that's happened in the episode. But what, just another thing in the episode I want to talk about as well is that I thought this was a very cool moment. So, you know, so with these with these podcasts, I kind of pick certain ideas through the episode and kind of focus on them, the interesting things to me. The whole episode was cool, but these are these are the points that I thought were very interesting. There's also a scene with Michael and Mr. Saru where they're, where they're talking, having conversations. And Michael, the captain's like, man, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just stressed. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but she's communicated. I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. It feels like it's too much, right? And she's sitting with Saru. And Saru was like, I learned something from somebody. When I'm feeling that way, this, this, you might want to try this method to just feel relaxed and released. And Michael's like, okay, what? What do you want me to try? But Mr. Saru's like, just yell. Just yell loud and you will feel relief and, re- and you feel de-stressed. Just yell. Michael's like, really? So Saru yells. Mr. Saru yells. Michael yells. And they feel relaxed. Now, I found that many years ago. That helps. <laughs> That's real, man. I don't know if there's science behind it that makes it real. But I know from personal experience, that is real. I've spent many times in this casa yelling loud. <laughs> real. Just yelling loud, out loud, yelling. Yelling, talking-ish, doing wrestling promos, expressing loud voice. Right? I've done that many times. And every time I do it, I feel so good. <laughs> there's truth in that. So that scene between Michael and Saru resonated with me so much because I know that. I've lived that. I've done that. Sometimes you just feel so overwhelmed and so, so stressed. These these moments happen. They've happened to me many times. And a lot of times back in the days, I didn't know how to cope with them or deal with them. But I found many tools to do that now. And one of the tools is, yeah, just yell, bro. And if you're in a space where you can't because you got to be quiet, put a pillow over your mouth and just yell, bro. Just yell loud. Talk ish, yell. Just express those emotions, express those feelings. You will feel so much better. It is so cool that Saru and Michael were modeling that in the episode. I felt that as I know that. I know that one for real. So, yes, so disco is great. I've been saying it all season. I'm feeling emotions. It's speaking about our experience on planet Earth now. It's such a great show. I love the show so much. I'll be honest, it started off a little rocky. But man, it is such a powerful, great show. I love it so much. It's a lovely time to be a Trek fan. Trek is back again. It was hot in the 90s, now it's back again. We, oh my, your Trek is so good. So yeah, and that's Disco. So we so we got to watch Disco this week. Then there was a second trick. There was two Treks on the tube this week, on Thursday. Disco and Picard. Double feature, baby. Trek is all up in the TV, son. Trek is here. We going double Trek, double feature. So in Picard this week, penance. We find that someone changed the past. And Picard is now not in the Federation no more. He's in the Confederation. And the Confederation is bad. They're bad, bro. It's a bad society. The oppressive regime. The oppressive. They're bad, bro. Yeah, they're bad. Someone changed something in the timeline back in the day. It made what we know as the Federation turn into the Confederation. Instead of being noble and good, they're evil and bad or oppressive or whatever. So someone went back in time. That's someone that does. And he changed a little something. And instead of the Federation becoming what we know them to be, they became the Confederation. And they're not that nice. Let's just say they're not very nice guys. Society's not very nice. They're not very nice people. Not all of them. I'm sure some are nice. But... Generally, the society is not that great compared to the Federation. What I found interesting about this is where the characters we know, how do they fit into this society, right? So I'm in America in 2022. In the society I am, it has produced this. It has produced me, this, this version. I live in a free land, a noble land, a land of tolerance and understanding, right? That's where I'm at. And just produce this, this guy here. Now, this same guy, me. Let's put us in a totalitarian regime. Put me in one of those totalitarian regimes. Put me in Nazi Germany. 
Put me in North Korea. Put me in China. Put me in these places, right? Put me in those places where society was different than what I know here. Would this guy become the same guy he is now? Or would he be something totally different? Now, interesting. It's interesting to see Picard where they ended up in those societies. So Picard is a, a, a successful, fantastic uh, Starfleet officer in the Federation, in the society we know. Now flip the society. What did Picard become? Same guy. It's an oppressive society, but he became the same guy. Just a little more evil, a little more bad. He still was in the Federation, still excelled, succeeded. Same guy. Seven or nine, the same thing. They still became great officers. No matter if the regime was bad or good. They got in where they fit in. That was their role, right? Some of the other characters, not so much. Some of the other characters were resistance fighters, right? They were resistance fighters, right? That's where they fit in. It's, it's, it's interesting to think about the environment and how does the environment play on us as human beings, right? That's what kind of shows there. So if the environment is slightly different, would you get the same result? Let's say Picard in 79, they kind of did. Society is different, but yet they still took the same path, right? Picard didn't become some, some you know, Che Guevara or something, or some, you know, freedom fighter. No, he still became a Starfleet officer. He still joined the system. Same with Seven of Nine, right? Other guys, not so much, right? There's something about their, their personality that just, that's the path they take no matter what society looks like, right? Now, if you take our society, I think when you came up, or like, like I touched on earlier, if, if society, if the environment would be slightly different, would you have taken a different path? Would your path been different if the environment was slightly different than what you path traveled, right? Would you became evil? being good would you be the same guy would you be the same in any timeline the same in any society I don't know it's a very interesting thing that, that, that talks about there so I want to talk about that one additional thing I want to talk about is that in the episode it shows that evil Picard quotation marks had executed quite a bit of people that we know a lot of these people from other races and species that we know they're aware of Picard executed them right he executed a bunch of uh, people we know because they were adversaries to the Federation. And in the episode, there's one last adversary that Picard has to execute. And she's ready, she's waiting. They've captured the Boar Queen and they're gonna execute her, right? Now, interesting the thing is, for everything I know about the Boar Queen, I've watched Star Trek for so long, I know how horrible, destructive, I can't stand the Boar guys, like the Borg suck, right? evil bad guys can't stand them like man these guys are always trying to destroy the federation assimilate us all the time right I've seen that on the screen for so many years it's been shown tons of times but what's very interesting when they showed that they were going to execute the Borg Queen for everything she's ever did or the Borg Collective have ever done I've known to been aware of a piece of me felt sorry for It's cra- it's craziness because I know how bad these Borg are. These Borg are not the nicest people. They're really not. They're really not nice or bad. They just they just have a certain mindset, and they want to accomplish certain goals. And part of that is kind of assimilating us. But I don't like it. But after seeing all that for all these years, and then when they were going to execute her, she was up for execution. I'm like, I kind of felt bad for the Borg Queen, which is so crazy. I might be getting soft my old age. Maybe I'm soft. Maybe I got more feelings. Maybe I got more empathy. Sympathy. I don't know. But to be real, that's how I felt. I felt that way. The Borg Queen has been shown to be kind of bad. I'm just saying. And I felt bad that you're going to It's so crazy how that works. I was wondering if that was the intention of the writers and the producers of the show. To take this character, these people, that you look at in a negative, bad light for so long and make you feel some empathy for them. I bet you they were planning on doing that. I bet you it's part of the plan. And if it was part of the plan, it worked. Because I did feel a little sorry for it, honestly. Which is so crazy. So what's going on? So I'm just going to stop right here. You know, I could go on and I could ramble on and on and on, but I won't. So anyways, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Gracias. Gratitude. And until next time, we'll see. Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. Lou Holtz. Until next time, it's Captain Peace.
the Captain, the Captain Talks, Talks Flex. Flex.